So earlier this week we were looking at the image of Charnel Mulligan Park and how we can use that as an XREF to put it into our drawings. And we can then trace that in order to um, create new parts of the park or things that we want. So today what we're going to look at is the ability that we have to um, create locations in our drawings. And that is under is it annotations here. I gotta remember exactly where it's located. It's under insert. So what we can do is we can set a location. And when you do this, it's gonna ask you if you want to do it from a file, which would be like a coordinate file from uh, a mapping type of software, or from a map. And I'm gonna say from a map today. And then it's going to give me some options. Do you want to use online map data? And so this allows you to use an online service to display maps in AutoCAD. You have to sign into an AutoCAD 360 account to do this, but those accounts are free. So I'm going to say yes. Then I'm going to sign in. Okay, so now it's going to ask me some questions in order to choose exactly where I want to be. Um, I can type an address or latitude and longitude that I want to zoom into. So I looked up the latitude and longitude of the image that we used from Charlton uh, Park. So I'm going to say 44.041206 north and 123.095668 west. And it zooms me right into that area. And I can drop a marker there if I want to. And then I can say next. Now it's going to ask me to specify a coordinate system to assign to the drawing. So I looked up what Google Earth does, and they use a um, uh, WGS 84, um, and then the simple cylindrical. So we're going to look for the WGS 84. It could also be the NAD 83 would work as well. So I could type in one that I want to. We're going to use the W84 pseudo Mercator. And we'll say next. So that puts us in the Pacific time zone, which is where we want to be. And the drawing unit is in inches. We can also change that to feet or miles. Um, but since we draw most things in inches, I'm going to leave it that way for right now. Then I select a point on my screen for the location, and I'm going to do the geographical location 000. And I specify the north uh, direction angle, so I'm going to keep it at 90. And it's going to take a second because it takes a second for it to pull the image in. So my screen's kind of almost frozen at the moment while it zooms in on that. Okay, so there's my marker. And that is right where I wanted to put it, which was on the corner of the park. And you can see that this picture was actually taken more recently than the Google Earth picture because this shows while they were in the middle of that remodel. They had gotten rid of all the sod and gotten rid of all the cement and taken out the park structure already, but had saved some of the mature trees. Um, so we would then be able to do our drawing actually over this and have our drawing be geo-referenced as well so that it was on a map specifically and um, 
this is great when you're doing developments where you want all of the sites to be located on the streets and addresses that they're actually going to be at or things like that um, so that they can be mapped correctly and you can um, do things like put them on your website to show people exactly where each house is going to be or where your model homes are or things like that. So you can then um, do a capture area which will capture an image from the online map for a specific rectangular area in order to have that printed or archived as part of your drawing. You can change the map style so you can switch it over to map road instead of area, the aerial view. Um, you can also switch it over to map hybrid which shows the aerial view with the roads over the top. Um, this is often the most useful because it's got a nice grid on it, and if you want to be able to show the addresses specifically, it can help with that. Um, and there's also map off, so you can hide it if you want to be able to draw your objects now that you've located the right area and then turn the map back on. Yes? What, what it does is that basically it brought it in in inches and so like if I were to do a dimension on this it would show me in inches like how far this side of the street to this side of the street is which is like 86 or whatever inches it is true to size so your items that you draw in are going to have to be scaled to the appropriate number of inches, which is why sometimes you'll want to bring it in in feet or miles if you're doing like road planning instead of housing. Um, you'd bring it in at miles and that way you can draw your roads in at sections of miles and have it be to scale approximately for real. It wasn't at all. Yeah, that image was really small because I had taken it and saved it as a smaller GIF. Whereas this one is actually a map that has been brought in at true to size and you're just using it as a location piece, basically. Yes. Oh no, I could zoom anywhere, like I can zoom way out and it'll show me the continuing aspects of the map. It's a world map from like, a, it's not from Google, but it's a similar type of mapping that was done. Um, and so... Um, it's really nice and detailed. It's great for, you know, doing things like locating the park spaces that you're, you know, if you're creating a preserve or something like that, or if you're doing, um, like studies of where certain things are located. So they'll use this a lot in GIS when they are attempting to sort out, um, where it would be the best place to put a new store or the best place to put a new clinic or whatever so they can look at where the current outlie of those things is and then maybe say look at where the student housing is and look at where the bus lines go and then make decisions about the planning for things like that so this would be used more in things like civil design and civil drafting when you are creating bigger scale product projects than just one building or one object so this is how the GPS location works, um, and it's under, like I said, insert here and under location. Uh, the next thing that we're going to look at is the new collaborate tab. And so you can see once you've done insert and created a location, then you get this geolocation tab, and this is the specific, it's similar to how we got one that was uh, set specific for viewports once we had done, uh, created a viewport and so on. Um, and you can mark positions and things like that, so you can specify latitudes and longitudes and have it put those markers in. So say you wanted to do the bounding of the property that you're on, you could put the geolocators all the way around that property and so forth. Yes? So this is when you put it to capture area. And you can tell it to capture a viewport only or to capture a certain area and then drag around it. And that way it'll kind of clip it down to a smaller section that you can manage for a file size. 
Okay, so then the next thing we're going to look at is the new Collaborate features, and these are brand new to, to version 2019. Um, one is Shared Views, and so what Shared Views allows you to do is to uh, basically share uh, specific views that you've picked with other users. And so you can create a variety of layouts and share them with that person, and then they see it from the direction and size and scale that you wanted them to, basically. Um, so it's really nice. You can um, look at the help for it, which is pretty well descriptive. Um, they want you to do a subscription thing, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess that is just the subscription thing. A shared video or shared view sorry um, so what you can do is you can show them a view in a browser and send it to them and they can just look at it in their internet browser they don't have to have AutoCAD in order to be able to look at it um, you can also send them a link to it um, and people can post and reply to comments to the, with their colleagues and co clients so it's basically um, a way of everybody kind of talking about the project in a contained area so you have copies of everybody's comments and things like that so you can you know if somebody comes back to you later and says oh we never talked about doing this you could say oh yes we did <laughs> right here <laughs> remember <laughs> um or if they come back to you later and said well i told you i wanted it this way and you said it can say this is exactly what you told me and when <laughs> um so it's a really nice uh, ability to share with that. Right. You're sharing basically an image of what you want to share with them. The next thing that we have is this really cool feature called DWG Compare. And so what this lets us do is to take two drawings that are purportedly of the same thing and compare them. And what it's going to do is it's going to make any parts that are exactly the same gray and then any parts that have been altered other colors. And so this allows you to see what revisions have happened on a drawing. It allows you to see if, for example, you're redlining somebody's work where it doesn't match up with the original drawing or if I was doing student work so I could match them against my drawing and see where they were different. So I have two example drawings that I created so that we could look at how this works. So I'm going to open both of those files. And I just have to remember where I stored them for a second here. Okay, there it is. So I have floor plan sample, which is this original of the DB SAMP drawing that you guys used in your viewports object. And then I have another one that is the one that I made changes to, which is floor plan sample B. So looking at them, it's not immediately obvious what changes were made. But what I can do is I can then say DWG compare, and it's going to Assume that I want the one that's selected as the current drawing, but I can change that if I wanted to. And then it's going to ask me what I want for the second drawing, and I can either pick from a drop down, so because I have these already open, they're in the drop down, or I could browse to where that file was saved if I wanted to. So now I can say this, and I say compare, and it creates a third drawing. So in this third drawing, everything that is the same about them is gray then the things that are green are what was in the original drawing and the things that are red are the things that are different in the new drawing. So I extended out the terraces basically and made them bigger in the new version. And so it does this nice little revision cloud around it to show you exactly where I had made changes and it shows you both the old version and the new version so you can visually compare what the difference was as well. 
So this is great for when you revise a drawing because a lot of times you'll revise a drawing and hand it to somebody and they'll go, I don't see any difference. And so this really pinpoints for them exactly what was changed. Um, so it's a new thing. It's really nice. You can also have text as part of it. Um, so you can have it decide whether it compares the text or not. Um, and you can add the revision cloud onto it. You can have it decide whether it compares Hatch or not. Um, you can get some information about the drawing. So it will tell you basically where each of them is located, the date that they were saved last on, um, and who they were saved by, and what they're both called. Um, and then you can copy them to your clipboard if you want to, or insert in the drawing next to your current drawing so that you can see them. Or sorry, I mean insert the information here into your drawing. Um, and so this is, again, helpful for revisions because it shows the paths where you have them both saved and everything and when they were saved and changed. So if you're doing revisions, this helps with a revision history. Yes? Yes. If you save one, if you just resave it as the same drawing, then you're not going to be able to see the difference. But you generally don't do that on revisions anyway because you want to keep the old revisions. So new revisions are always going to be saved as, you know, dash one or whatever that you do to, to define your revision drawings. So, um, but it is true, they do have to be two separate drawings in order for you to compare them. No, because once you've saved over it, it's the new drawing, basically. It's the full drawing. So this is a really nice feature. Um, one of the uh, mechanical or architectural plans, I think, classes is actually using this right now because they have two separate groups who are uh, making changes to an existing drawing in two different ways, and they want to be able to do a presentation basically to compare the changes that they've made, the two groups made to that original drawing separately. And so I can't compare three drawings to each other, but what I can do is I can compare any two of those. So if I do them in pairs, then I can see how all three of them differ basically. Okay, so that is basically the new information that we're going to learn today.